Hello, my name is Roy Johnson from Acoustic IGJ. Um, today I'm going to be looking at banjos. So this is a Deering Sierra Deluxe banjo, which is probably ooh, about eight years old, I guess. It's recently had a, a new skin put on, and it had new strings put on by a dealer, and for a while I've not been very happy with the sound of it. The strings are lighter than I used to play before, um, I've noticed, particularly uh, today I had a request actually to do a, a video of a tune for somebody uh, that they're trying to learn. And for a while I've been aware of the kind of, kind of just annoying buzz that comes on, on one of these strings. Um, which you can't really hear when uh, you record it, but it, I can hear it. Um, I think probably people, when I, I, I teach, I think probably people, students can hear it as well, I think. Um, but just didn't pick up on a, on a camera. But it was mainly when I was doing a kind of a two to four slide on that one two, on that third third string. So what I'm going to do is armed um, with a very small hexagonal key uh, and a half inch spanner. You just take the banjo apart, fiddle around with the torsion rods and hopefully sort out my action. Um, and I'll capture all in film so you can just have a look at it and maybe try it yourself if you have the same sort of problem. Okay, so according to the specification, at the factory, Deering banjos are set up so that the bottom of the string is at the eighth of an inch mark away from the 22nd fret. And you can see now that I've put a steel rule next to the string that the top of the string is significantly lower than the eighth of the inch mark. So I think there's plenty of room there for a little bit of adjustment. Hopefully that will get rid of that um, fret buzz that I've been suffering from. So the first thing for me to do is just to remove four screws that hold the resonator onto the flange. So this steel part here is called the flange. Obviously the back part is called the resonator. And it's connected by four screws. So these screws usually come out quite easily. Um, they're only generally finger tight. So if we just Unscrew those. Whoops. Unscrew that one. And unscrew that one. So that's our four resonator retaining screws. And then all we have to do then is just lift up the banjo itself. Remove the pot, just stick that down somewhere safe for a minute. Then I'm going to flip the banjo over so we can start looking at adjusting the coordinator rods. Before we get into adjusting the banjo, um, let me just ask you please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, and that will let you know when I've uploaded some new videos. Please give me the thumbs up if you think the video is good and add any comments or thoughts you might have about how I go about doing things. Okay, so without any further ado, let's move on and see how you adjust the banjo. Okay, so a quick word about the two rods that are in the back of this banjo. The bottom rod is, re sole purpose really, is to add rigidity to the banjo itself. It actually connects through to the neck and then it's secured at the back of this rim. Um, if you don't have a good solid connection between the neck and the pot, then you lose resonance and you end up with kind of a muddy sound. So it's, it's there purely to hold the banjo together, but hold it together in a really secure, strong way. And this top coordinator rod here is the one that you can adjust to either raise or lower the action slightly. Okay? I say slightly because the majority of the neck action is determined by the um, the angle that the heel of the banjo is cut and that sets the neck one way or the other. So the adjustment is small but it's usually enough to make the, adjust the adjustment that you need. So in terms of adjusting this banjo the first thing to do is to loosen off this bottom threaded nut. So I've got a half inch uh, spanner for this. Um, the different banjos that you try this on may need different size spanners these nuts shouldn't be terribly tight, but I'm going to just hold on, I'm just going to put a, a wrench through that rod just to keep it in place while I turn this. Actually, that's quite loose, it's interesting. 
So I'm going to just slacken that right off so it's just spinning nice and freely. Okay, the first thing I want to do is just check the general tightness of these two rods. Now both of these rods should be fixed securely at this end. Um, so the best thing to use for this I found is a, an, Allen, an Allen key, um, mainly because if we look at this bottom rod here, um, if, I put a, if I put in something in, in that way round like a, a, a screwdriver, then I haven't got actually much adjustment, but with an Allen key I can put it in the short way round. And all I'm going to do is just kind of brace my thumb on the top rod and just see if there's any movement. And there's just a tiny bit, but that could be enough just to give it that extra bit of security. And again, I'll do the same thing with this top rod. Yeah, I mean, that's not going anywhere, so that's, that's pretty solid. So I'm happy to leave those like that. It's never a good idea to kind of over tighten these things. It's wood and metal after all, and you want to be fairly kind of gentle and kind to it. Okay, so I want to raise the action of the banjo, which means I want to have more space between the strings and the frets. So to do this, what I need to do is I need to make this rod push against the heel. So it, as it pushes the heel, it will kind of angle the neck away from the banjo. And to do this, what I need to do is to loosen this outside nut and tighten that inside nut. If you wanted to reduce the action of the banjo slightly, then you would do the opposite. You would loosen this inside nut and tighten the outside nut. Okay, so the half inch spanner, what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to loosen this off. And again, there's not a lot of pressure needed to loosen it off. It's not very, very tight, but I'm going to loosen it off so it's properly loose. And then what I'm going to do with this top one is I'm going to, and I can feel this one now is quite loose, so I'm going to tighten this one and I'm going to go roughly half a turn, so I'm going to call that a quarter. I can feel that pinching now, and I'm going to call that a half. And at this point I'm just going to go off the camera and just uh, check the measurements. Okay, so I've just checked that measurement and it's pretty pretty much there. I still think it'd go a little higher. I'd really like to get the bottom of the string at the level of the eighth of an inch mark. So I'm just going to give it another just a quarter turn. Whoops, hopefully use the right end of the spanner. And I think that will probably do it. What I should have said was when I was measuring it, I just actually had a little play, although I haven't got the resonator back on. And already I can tell that that, that, that buzz has, has, has disappeared. So I'm feeling quite positive that this should be good now. What you need to do now is just remember to tighten up the two nuts that were loosened off. This one's a little bit fiddly to get at, but again, it doesn't want to be over tightened anyway, so provided you can get a spanner on there, um, hold that bar in position, and then just make sure you tighten it the wrong way, sounds right the way. So here we go, so I'm going to give that another little bit of a, a tweak. Try it around the side. Yep, yeah, that's not too bad. I don't, want to, I don't really want to over tighten that. Um, but yeah, I can tell that's secure. And the same thing with this back nut here, which we loosened off. So I'm just going to tighten that one up. Actually, that one's feeling pretty, pretty tight as it is. So we've got two nice tight torsion rods. And all that remains now is for the resonator to be refitted. And then we should be good to have a tune up and see how it sounds. I thought before I put the resonator back on, I would just have a measure to see what the actual string height is. And you can see that it, uh, if I just rock that ruler, you can see that the string is just slightly below the eighth of an inch mark, which is actually fine for me because it's got rid of the string buzz. And I think it's a good idea to take a measurement just so that over a period of time, um, if you re-measure your string height, and you can see it's it's moved either one way or the other, that you kind of know which way to go. And also, I suppose it's an early warning that there might be problems if you um, if the string height rise, rises or, or lowers. So yeah, so that's it, just under an eighth of an inch, and it's good to put the back on now. Fitting the 
Banjo back into its resonator is obviously just the opposite to the way we removed it. Strangely enough, I find one, this one of the fiddliest things to do um, because although we'd have uh, fixed fitting points, they don't necessarily line up exactly where the holes are in the flange to put the nuts back in. So I'm just going to make sure the neck sits in the pocket. Good, okay, so that's sitting in, sitting in place. Now, what I recommend is that when you start screwing these into the little brass holes that they screw into, that you don't screw them all the way in. Just keep them nice and loose. Put one in at a time. Um, because you may find that you need to jiggle the banjo around a bit just to free up a little bit of space to get these bolts in. And this is the one for some reason which is just slightly out of centre and it's a little bit tricky to oh it's gone in first time. It makes a change, okay? And then that's the fourth one that I'm putting in now. Which you can't see because my hand's in the way. Okay. Yeah and if you feel that this the the the, the if you if you feel that the nut isn't going cleanly into the thread, just lift it out and try it in again because you do, you don't want to cross thread them. Then all I do is I just tighten them up gradually, usually into kind of opposite corners, so that when they do start biting, they bite reasonably evenly. I'll get it tuned up and we'll have a look and see how it sounds. Right, and here we are. Put the banjo back together again. All in tune. And that's the offending string, sounds a lot better actually. So, I think proof in the pudding would be to just leave this to settle in for a few days. Um, and maybe tweak it a little bit more if necessary. Um, obviously what I've done is I've just raised, raised the action. Just, just so you know, um, there are other things that can cause string bars. One of them is obviously uh, the fact that sometimes a fret can lift slightly, um, so the fret may need to be filed down. It's probably kind of a, a professional kind of job to do that. Uh, and the other thing is if you've had a new head fitted recently, they can stretch and obviously if they stretch they loosen and so the bridge itself will, will drop therefore that will lower the action so sometimes um, a slight bit of fret pre buzz or load action can be raised by tweaking these or tightening the, um, the adjusting screws for the, the, the tighten the head down again it's a bit of a specialist job but it's nothing that can't be done if you're really careful okay thanks for listening if you've enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Subscribing is free or you use a Google account, I think. Uh, click the bell icon, um, add any comments in the comments section and um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.